Lord of the Fries co-founder Amanda Walker is all about fast food and slow business. Despite already having 23 retail outlets nationally, including one in New Zealand, an online store, her own mac and cheese brand and a range of merch, she's in absolutely no hurry to build an empire. Instead, her and her two business partners are building a business they love in their own time, while it's largely avoiding the normal stresses that the rest of us experience daily. Are you with me? It's a refreshingly slow but insightful episode 594 of the 12-year-old, award-winning, small business, big marketing podcast. See what I did there? Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead, now here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of deeply fried marketing. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, and I have an insatiable curiosity for uncovering marketing ideas that help businesses just like yours, like exactly like yours, to grow. How do I do that? By having in-depth conversations with successful business owners from around the world every week. You, infinitely more importantly, are a motivated business owner ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire that at least I believe it absolutely deserves to be. And that's why this show exists. So well done to you for finding it, hopefully subscribing to it, and tuning in. Thank you so much. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Before we meet Amanda, awesome interview, I've got to say. You are, you have every reason to be excited by this interview. Um, a quick reminder to join the Small Business Big Marketing Tribe on Facebook. Uh, well over 2,000 business-owning tribesters. It's free. We support each other. We share marketing ideas. We ask questions, hold each other accountable. Plenty going on. So be sure to join that and hang around after the interview to hear from a listener who shares his addiction. Fortunately, it's a healthy one, along with how he figured out how to create helpful content for his trade business. Really, really great voicemail from listener. Uh, and now, let's go and meet Amanda. Lord of the Fries is an Aussie fast food chain launched in 2004, specialising in creating the world's best hot chips. Now that is a mission that I want to be a part of. Count me in. With prominent locations all over Australia, one in New Zealand as well, I've walked past them so many times, and but never sampled their hot chippies. I've no idea why. It's just quietly, I'm very partial to a hot chip, and if it's got chicken salt on it, hold my legs. I'm going in. That said, my vegan daughter Steph, along with all her vegan friends, are Lord of the Fries addicts. What I love about Amanda's approach to business is the slowness in which she and her two business partner, one's her hubby, and the other one's her brother-in-law, approach growing the business. They avoid stress, meditate twice daily, they're not greedy, and this all enables them to make considered decisions without the usual stresses the rest of us carry. You with me? So join me as Amanda shares her insights into idea creation, launching and growing a business, why and how to take the slow option, franchising, working with family, social media, and plenty more. By the way, I unfairly suggest Lord of the Fries socials are a bit underdone during the interview. I was wrong. They're better than my research showed. I'll let you be the final arbiter of that if you choose to go and have a look at their socials, but yeah, might might have been a little bit harsh on Amanda during the interview, but she was cool about it. I started off by asking her her favourite way to eat the humble potato. Oh, that's an amazing question. No one's ever asked me that before. I love potatoes in so many ways. Yes. I've had to pick a favourite... I might go baked potato. Just a standard baked potato. Yeah. Foil. Loaded. Loaded. Cream cheese, chives, bit of bacon. Sour cream. Oh, no, bacon. Vegan bacon. <laughs> Vegan, Vegan bacon. Vegan bacon. Bacon. I bacon. Wanna, I want to talk to you about that later, but yeah. I'll, I'll save that one. Yeah, my loaded daughter, potato. My da- beautiful daughter, Stephanie, is a vegan, and Ooh. we have ongoing conversations. Wonderful. My beautiful girlfriend, Sarah, does a Hasselback potato. Have you ever heard of that? I have. Oh, my goodness. Cut in half. Thinly sliced, so the heat and the oil and the butter and the juices get in, crisp it up in the oven. Yeah, 
That sounds Life like is good. That's my new favorite kind of potato now. There you go. Yeah, that sounds delicious. The simple potato is such a cool thing. So mm. where, where did the idea for Lord of the Fries come from back in 2004? Yeah, so that is a great story. I love it. Basically, I had moved to Taiwan to teach English, fell in love there with an amazing guy, and we we're both vegetarian. We want to create a business together. So we looked at what could we do that is aligned with our values and our energy levels and things that we love. We want to be our own bosses and have the freedom to travel and grow. So we looked at opening a restaurant. Did he love potatoes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We loved eating. We loved potatoes. We yeah. loved it all. So a lot of our relationship is built around eating and we still <laughs> yeah. we enjoy that so much. It's wonderful to have that in common. 100%. So we... Yeah, we want to. We looked into opening a restaurant, which uh, we moved back from Taiwan, and we quickly realized that was quite an expensive experience to to invest in. We didn't have much money; we mm-hmm. had around ten grand in our savings. Had either of you run a business before? Um, no, no, we hadn't. We had both just been teachers and both studying. Teachers. And, yeah. Well, no, actually, Mark had run a few businesses. He started as a, a teenage entrepreneur in the Victoria market, selling branded tracksuits, cool branded tracksuits. There you go. And actually, he had another business where he was selling CDs. He had a CD business with a friend. Oh, he's got it in him. Yeah, yeah, he had it in him. And both my parents were entrepreneurs, so we weren't afraid of this. Uh, you were, yeah, that's interesting. It's like, yeah. let's just go for it, you yeah. know? Yeah, because my question was around like fear of the unknown and the risk, but it's sort of yeah. in the blood. Yeah, we have a fear of the, the unknown spud. and the risk. Yes, in the spa. <laughs> that's nice. My blood's made of spud. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so we, we, but we were, we were focused on what we wanted to create rather than what we were afraid of not having. We wanted the freedom, we wanted the joy, we wanted the values, and we just didn't really factor in the fact that it might not work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were just looking for something that would work. And you were young. Yeah, we were young. We, we, we started this when we were 20. No, we met when we were 27, and we started, I guess, around when we were 28. So we were young. Wow. We were fresh and yeah. getting into that new stage so you, of life. So your time at, in Taiwan had, was done. You'd met the man of your yeah. dreams. You had so much in common. You yeah. agreed to start a business together. So, all right, and he's Australian? Yeah. So let's get back to Australia. Yeah, that's right. And there's a restaurant you wanted to start. Yeah, so we were in the restaurant, but then we quickly realized, wow, that's like going to cost a lot. What else can we do? So mm. then we looked in a uh, food van. We thought, wait, this is perfect. We can go to concerts. It'll be amazing. You know, travel different music festivals. So we bought a van. Then we started to think, okay, what are we going to put in it? <laughs> what are we going to sell it? I love, <laughs> right? I love it. Reverse sort of engineer it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, create the problem. Yeah, so then we're like, okay, so what are we going to sell? So then we, we found the festivals we'd like to go to, and we called them with some ideas. Oh, we've got this amazing organic uh, soup and sandwich van. Mm, no. So this time you're lying. At this point, you're lying. Yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. We're, we're Fake it till you make imagining. It. imagining. Yes, imagining. Let's, uh, <laughs> uh, then we have a crepe van. No, no thanks. So we, we were, so were generating, gathering interest. No one was interested in this or that. So we went and spoke to a woman who had an actual van who goes to events, mm-hmm. and she told us the best seller was the French fry. And we thought, oh, my God, how obvious. This is the key, right? Because at the time, for vegetarians, French fries were cooked in beef, very hard to get. Mm-hmm. Even the French fry we couldn't eat. That's a bestseller. Canada is a country with a lot of food vans already, and I had worked in some that spe- sell only potatoes. You're Canadian. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm Canadian. Mm-hmm. So uh, it just seemed like a, such an obvious, awesome idea. So then we went back to our house, which was above Mark's parents' house. So we had that sort of support that we weren't... Nice you know, paying our mortgage or rent at that point. So we could focus on this business, right? We both had gotten temporary jobs doing stuff with Coldmeyer admin. And we started to really work on this idea. Okay, French fries. We bought, we went to the Vic market, bought a whole bunch of potatoes, washed them, tested them. We bought a deep fryer from Coldmeyer, tabletop, cooking, trying different oils, trying different potatoes. Yeah, it was really fun. And then the name, you might ask. Hold on, yeah, boy, yeah. I, I, I'm interested in that. But before <laughs> so we get to the, the story. name, that's how it started, basically. That is awesome. Yeah, we do, just do you look sort back of on followed those days? the trail of what's kind of which doors opening. Oh, this door's opening. This door's opening. Okay, we're going to keep going here. Do you look back on those days with just deep fondness? Yeah, no yeah, doubt. But all days with fondness. It's oh, all good. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. It's, do you look on? To, do you look at today as one of fondness? It's one of my favorite days ever. <laughs> favorite day ever. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, well, yeah, any day above ground is um, a good day. I'm very grateful to be here and I love the studio. It's really cool. I'm very grateful to be talking to you because it is a brand that I see around and I know nothing about. Mm. So it's quite Mm. interesting. I'm really like enjoying and looking forward to what is revealed in this conversation. Mm. So you're there in above Mark's mum and dad's home with a deep fryer, a whole lot of potatoes Mm -hmm. 
you, were you just wanted to create the perfect chip, or was it yeah. about? Yeah, well, that was what it was yeah, about. Which one tastes the best? Which How did you do that? Did you do the whole? Because back then, like. Were you yeah. Googling it or were you just like it's, hit and miss? Yeah, Google and yeah. hit and miss. But Google was de- definitely just budding, yeah. you know, just growing. What was the yeah. worst? Can you remember? It's a long time ago. Oh, no. But I don't remember, but some maybe the King Yeti or maybe that was good. I don't really remember actually. Not great at and, and remembering details. You finally <laughs> like joined that, that club. That type of detail. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, what? <laughs> so, Jane, um, no, Amanda, uh, you finally hit on a spud after a few days yeah, or weeks and go, yeah. this is it. This is yeah. the this is the chip. Yeah. And you start going to festivals. Is that it? No, no. So, we found the spud and I won't come tell you what it is later. Oh, so it's got slipped out of my... Oh, head. okay. You slipped. Yeah. I thought it might be like a kernel secret <laughs> herbs and spices that you can't reveal yeah, yeah, the pota- can't, type of potato. I can't tell anyone, but I, actually that's true. So, is, it, is it a Pontiac? <laughs> mm, maybe <laughs> warm. Mm. Anyway, I, I'm out. Of, I've, I've now exhausted my potato <laughs> knowledge. Mm, so okay, so we've got the <laughs> the potato. We've got. Then we're thinking, okay, what are we going to do with the potatoes? So they're double cooked, like in Europe. Have you been to Europe before, where they yeah, sell uh, the fries in the cone? And uh, well, uh, the first answer is yes. I've been to Europe. I don't remember fries in cones as being like an integral part of my European experience. Amsterdam. But is that, no, I've only been. To, I've only been to Italy, France, and England. Okay, so you have a lot of to you have to explore. Put mayonnaise on their fries. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So this is where we we were inspired by this. That's Our, weird. No, Ugh. it's wonderful. Mm, okay. I know you're feeling some resistance. Yeah, I am. That. A lot of resistance. You just close your eyes and try it. You will like it. Okay, it's so good. What? Also, me too. When I first explored, I was like. No, never. Sweet never. chili, yuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, people do all kinds of things all just, around the world with just potatoes. Just chicken salt, mate. So just it's like chicken salt on everything really Yeah, is a solution. Agreed. Good. As a vegan, you agree. I yeah. guess there's no chicken in chicken salt. Is that mm, right? Some chicken salt has chicken. Okay. I used to tell my kids that chicken salt came from, you know, like when you see a chicken that's been plucked. Yeah. I'm sorry, because you're a vegan. Can I have this conversation? You can. I'm just, I'm editing it. Yeah. And it's plucked and it's got all those little dimples on its yeah. skin. Mm-hmm. I tell my kids that each one of those dimples has a grain of chicken salt in it and that's that where it comes so from. That is so gross. Mm. <laughs> your kids must be like, the, your well, daughter's a well, vegan. One's a right? vegan and one's a vegetarian. I'm seeing this. Good, good. I like your parenting. It's working in my favor. <laughs> Scaring them into yeah. not eating meat. Nice. nice. <laughs> I'll do that. Whatever works. That's right. So, okay. So, we're, we're, we've now got... Uh, and you've got to figure out how, you've got to brand it. You've got to bring this idea to life. Yeah. You need a name. Yeah, you need, need a, a name. You need a, an experience, of some packaging, some branding. Yeah. So what happened there? Okay. So we had some friends over. We're like, try these potatoes, try these sauces. We knew we were going to do different sauces as well. So mm-hmm. mayonnaise, which is a, it really is delicious. Um, yeah, remember? whatever. Right. Uh, we were going to do cheese and gravy like they do in Canada. We were going to try it with salsa, sour cream, just like how we do a loaded potato. Mm-hmm. Indian sauce, we thought, let's try it with that. You know, mm. anything that we love, we're just thinking, oh, let's try it. Quite ahead of the game because the whole concept of a loaded fry these yeah. days is like, it's, it almost seems like it's two or three years old, but you're, yeah. t- you're doing this. Oh, Did you yeah. use the word loaded? No. We just call them deluxe. S- <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah but you're right, loaded. I couldn't, when I went to the Gold Coast recently, I went to so many different restaurants yeah. as I do. Everything's loaded. Like loaded, loaded, yeah. So, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, ahead we're ahead of the game, yeah. yeah. But, that's what's cool also. Okay. Yeah. So you had some friends over. So we had some friends over we like, what do we call it? And yeah. everyone's saying things. So maybe the fry guys, the best fries ever guys or something. I don't know. And <laughs> yeah, then yeah, yeah. all of a sudden Mark's brother is like, what about Lord of the Fries? And it was like, this is the name. So I quickly went and Googled it. Yeah. No one had taken it in Australia, the domain. So I grabbed it. What and about in America? Uh, someone bought that. Do you know what it is? I'm always it interested is in what the dot com some, is. Yeah, lordofthefries.com. That's it, but some. I think I might have looked it up. Somebody and, has it, and it oh, wasn't. Oh, it wasn't no, active. No, somebody bought it though. So yeah, we've been it's, and it's parked. Yeah, Is that I right? think. Yeah, there's. We're in process of probably trying to get it. Really? But, yeah, we've been working on that, but sometimes we forget. Because you want to go beyond Australia. Oh yeah, we are beyond Australia already. Do your research. New Tim. Zealand. No. That's oh, there right. you go. That's all right. That's not that far. Yeah, no, that's just our eighth state. Yeah, but you're not in. Right. You're not in fancy countries. This is the best. <laughs> That's right. We're the best countries. New Zealand's pretty fancy. It is. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it's amazing. So, Lord of the so Fries. So, we've got Lord of the Fries. We've got the fries. We've got the sauces. That's it. We've got the van, locations. Just on the name. Yeah. yeah. Do you love it? Yeah. Is there any it. association with Lord of the Flies? 
No. It's just, a, I know it's a play on, on it, but no one's gone, although, yeah, that's my favourite book. Maybe Lord of the Rings. Ah, oh, I never thought mm-hmm. like that. Yes. Lord of the Onion Rings. Exactly. Hello. Don't you start that business. <laughs> I got that I got that domain name. I'd encourage you to, oh, you have got it. Yeah. I was going to say, this goes live next mark. week. I'd go and make sure you've got it registered. <laughs> yeah, there's someone else did Lord of the Wings. But anyways, yeah, so Sam also has a history of, he did Planet of the Crepes and sold that domain name and then he thought of Lord of the Fries. So Sam, Mark's brother. Yeah. Gave us crowned the name and crowned nice. the business with that. There you go. Yes. Can I make a confession? Yes. It's not a good confession because I'm sitting with the founder of Lord of the Fries. Never had one. Oh, well, you will. Never. Walked past it so many times oh, and I was try- I was reflecting. Did you say why? Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Because my daughter Stephanie loves, loves, loves it. Jack loves it. My older boy who's a vegetarian. Love you, kids. <laughs> And I just, I, I don't know. Well, you, maybe you, you don't feel like it. The only time I ever walk past a Lord of the Fries is at Flinders Street Station. Yeah, that's my store. There you go. Yeah. And maybe just, I'm like, I'm about to hop on a train and I don't want everyone else smelling my beautiful fries because they'll want one. That is a trigger for people. <laughs> I've read that a lot. Like, who, who's on my train eating Lord of the Fries? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Well, you, you will got, try. Okay, I'll hook you yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, Totally. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like I just, I have no real reason because I do. I love hot chips. It's oh, one yeah. of my. You, like, they're really good. Ours are fresh cut, flash frozen. They're beautiful. Right. Yeah. One thing that um, they've got skins on. High class grade eight potatoes. I just want to like, like. Yeah. Well, know, no. Let's talk about that they're because they're not junk. Like, okay, it's fast food, agreed. But yeah, yeah. in terms of potato, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. Well, it was like Declan Local. Lee last week's episode with the founder of Gelato Messina. Uh, we, we're going to have a marketing discussion. What came out of that discussion with Declan was that the best marketing is a great product. We know that. And he's an absolute example of that. And clearly yeah. you are as well. Yeah. You're, you're telling me I haven't, yeah. had, I haven't had yours. I've had a lot of gelato Messina, as you can tell. Yeah. You, I, I read on your website, the disdain for nasty frozen chemical fries inspired you to create the perfect fry. Yeah. Tell me about that because even Declan was telling me in gelato, cheap gelato has gels. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you don't even believe. tell me that. You I don't believe. want gel. Yeah. You won't believe what's in. Tell some us. Tell us what's in a ba- what's in a bad fry. Okay, mm. I've got a list of ingredients. There's 26 ingredients oh, in some no. big brand name fries. I'm all going to trash them. Oh. Here. But 26 ingredients. So ours have maybe two: potato and a very light preservative. S- yeah, light. Come on. Yeah, I Come think clean. it's a it's light <laughs> preservative. It's a little bit. It's. It's sticky, how do you, how do you put that in? It's if you're not slice- loaded with preservatives. It's amazing. It's a it, potato, basically. So twenty. You're not going to go through the list. Twenty. It's just yeah. horrifying. I'll send you the list. I'm not very post. good. I'm, I love food, but I'm not very good at uh, and kind of interrogating or looking at what is in what I eat. Oh no, a lot of people. And it's kind of scary know. when you yeah. have these conversations. Yeah. Like so, a lot of wine is filtered through fish. A lot of wine has egg in it. Hang on, hang Beer, on, hang on, fish. hang on, Amanda. That's yeah. the most. That's the strangest sentence. Isn't that interesting? Of today, right? Do you know, a, a lot of wine is filtered through fish. Fish, fish scales. Why? Beer. So, I don't know why. Hang on. How? Where, uh, I don't know. So is there no, like a okay. tray with Beer, lots of fish scales, yeah. and the wine just? Yeah. No, that's not yeah, possible. It's true. Why? Okay, I don't know, but I. It could be the beer and the fish and the wine and the egg. But either way, both <laughs> alcohols have meat in them. Okay. Right? So there's weird stuff. And you know gummy bears. Yeah, yeah. What, that remind me, pig fat or something? Gelatin. Gelatin, yeah. That's like b- bone marrow stuff. So it's uh, beef. If you, your, if you knew this. Yeah, it's weird. It's you weird. just wouldn't eat. Or you'd go you and You would just on. eat it Lord of the Fries. you just eat Lord of the Fries, right? yeah. <laughs> so... It's kind of weird to think that there is so many foods that have so many bad things in them, but we, yeah. you know, we live in such a kind of convenient society that we just go for it. Yeah, some of us. When was the last time you had Maccas? Probably when I was 15. There you go. So that's just like a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I should have said that. Yeah. I was actually thinking of my a, next question. Tell ago. me, so you've got, you got the product, you've got awesome fries. Yeah. You got the name. Yeah. You got a logo. Yep. Same logo as the, the logo you have now is the same this is, logo. This is the original logo that you're looking at okay. right now. That's a bit of a yeah, chunky similar. font, but yeah, we, yeah. We, we've made it a little bit cleaner on the evolved. website. Yeah. It has evolved. Uh, you got the truck and yeah. you go to festivals. And yeah. I'm guessing that's your research lab. Yeah. And we're putting them in a cone like they do in Europe. Mm-hmm. So we had the fries hand cut because. We just found fries to be quite disgusting because because of our dietary and ethical 
preferences. Yes. We, we know what's in the, all, all of our food we're looking at. Yeah. So we are combing through ingredients. Okay. And we're seeing that these potatoes are sort of sinister. Yes. So we're making fresh potatoes with, with nothing, just, just washing a potato, cutting it, mm-hmm. cooking it, mm-hmm. and uh, putting them in a cone like they do in Europe, loading them up with sauce if that's your interest, which mm-hmm. was most people were really interested in that. And uh, we had cues and cues. The, wow. the um, biggest straight, cues. straight away. Yeah, straight because away. Because you got a head start. The fact that you are dealing in fries and hot chips is yeah. like, you're going to have a cue. Yeah. And then it's a matter of the them. word getting out. Yeah. You know the cone thing? Because you mentioned it a, a couple of times. Yeah. Um, do you still serve them in cones? No. Nah. Oh, you don't? No. Nah. Because I was going to say, you know, like when you well, go to festivals, so the cone. It's a little bit hot on the hands, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. But it, it was going to say, like, it's actually a good marketing play. It's like, yeah. you know, when you see someone walking around with a particular branded shopping bag or something, it's like, oh, yeah. and, it, and it looks special. Then you oh, go, oh, I've, I've got to go to that. Yeah. You know, when I go to festivals and, in fact, I went to one on Sunday and I saw the cones of calamari, you know, yeah, that's those where. those are the cones. Yeah, it's yeah. just such a good kind of point of difference. Yeah, you know, maybe we'll go back to it. Now we, we've got some funds behind us and mm-hmm. we're, we're a much bigger network where we can afford to create some innovative packaging. Yeah. Like, you know how Starbucks made the sleeve? Yes, Right, we would need the sleeve for yeah. the poem. It's very hot. But yeah, people, yeah, okay. People still took them and they loved it. So the few years, about five years, we had the cones, or maybe long. I don't really okay. remember. But there was a bunch of years, a lot of stores, a lot of cones, and yeah. we would have seen them around the city. We used to stamp the. You cones. wouldn't be the only cone at a festival, just. You, know, you with me? <laughs> no, yeah, people love the cones. They're like, <laughs> get it good, so, dude. So all of a sudden, you've, you've almost got an instant endorsement that you, this is a good idea. Yeah, and, and you, it was you, fresh, funky. You know, the festivals yeah. were full of sort of the dinosaurs. Yeah, brand, right. The brand, no branding, just like sort of sloppy yeah. looking. We we brought this cool looking thing, played music. So. Have you always been someone? Because you were. I mean, it, this is two thousand. I'm about five, I guess. Two thousand six. Yeah. yeah. You know, today what you're describing is just normal. Yeah. Like that's just what people are doing. Cool yeah. food, presented in a cool way, yeah. uh, you know, loaded, all that kind of stuff. But back then, yeah, it, it was, even it the was, food truck was, was kind cool. of like not something. It wasn't a, yeah. wasn't known. I feel so pumped. Like how you see in your experience and your reflection of our business. Oh, yeah. It's really <laughs> making me feel <laughs> I'm taking you great. back. Yeah, it's, it's really. It's actually, this is an episode of This Is Your Life. I'll just bring in Mike Munro. <laughs> um, yeah. So... You've got yeah. Well, you were you ahead yeah, of the game. Have you cool. always been ahead of the game, well, or is Mark? I don't think so. I think Mark is uh, Mark's a, a visionary. Yeah, I reckon he's. When I think about his role in our business, I mean, without him, there wouldn't it wouldn't be. You know, he's ah. he's a visionary. What so, do what do you bring each of you? Because it's always interesting speaking to partners that work together. Yeah. What do you have that he doesn't have, and what has he got that you haven't got? Well, he's got the vision. Yeah, big picture guy. Yeah, he's amazing, and he's on the pulse. I look at him like. I was listening to another one of your podcasts. Oh, thank you. That, the yeah, one. I have a bunch of them. I love them. <laughs> you know how you said the the person with the gold finger, Midas touch? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mark's got the Midas touch. Ah. One. He also has the vision and, um, I don't know, all just those big picture cool guy. things. Yeah, he can just see does it. He get in, does he roll oh. the sleeves up or he, he's no good at the details? No, he's like, not Mark, like that. stand back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark's just You're like, the- we're doing this, boom, and we're like, yes. Uh, and also, he's got the uh, discerning taste buds. Uh-huh. So he knows what tastes really good. He's like the potato version of a sommelier. <laughs> yeah, he's a potato Whatever sommelier. That is. <laughs> yeah, the put sommelier. The spadelier. Yes, yeah, that's food. This is a new word. Yeah, we, we just have to refine it a bit. It's we'll get our, it. Yes, we'll get it yeah. by the end of this conversation. We need, so you're we'll, a visionary too. Maybe See? some would say not, but you know, yeah. I'll take it. People say well, all stuff, I'll take but it. We, what we think is the truth. What about difficult conversations between you and Mark? Are they we easy? Would. Um, well, somewhat. I mean, you mean... Because that happened <laughs> about business. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, Mark's amazing. So Mark, Sam, and I all work together. Sam being Mark's... That's his brother. brother. So, oh, so the three of you are partners. Yeah, so an important thing to know is Mark and I started Lord of the Fries yes. together, but Mark and Sam are real close, and the family's close, so there's always influence, yep. you know? And then when we went from a van to a store, to a bricks and mortar, Sam took the leap and said, I'm, I'm joining the business. We had a... No. We had a Different partner, they pulled out right at a critical moment. Yep. And Sam said, I'll quit my job, I'll join. And so that's how. Cool. That's so how let's talk about it. that moment in time. So you're doing, how long do you do festivals for? Oh, just a year. Just a year? Yeah. Wow. A you full like. A year. And then we're like, all right. To give you uh, enough, enough cash and, <laughs> you know. Uh, cash. Yeah, it was enough. We had a, Sam brought in some money. Uh huh. Yeah. But we had a bit of, we okay, built so you had some a bit money. Of, a bit of dough. Not much. Not no. much, though. We didn't need much, really. Okay. So we, then you buy your first shop? 
Oh, you leased your yeah. first shop? Yeah. So then we found a store at Elizabeth and Flinders on the corner. So yes. I was walking around the city every day looking for a cool place for us. Yeah. And I saw this was a juice shop. Yeah. And it was for lease and called Mark. And said, Mark, what do you think? He called them. He's like, yes. It's a donut shop now, isn't it? Yeah, it's a donut shop. Anyways, so um, that was our shop for a while. That's not a cheap. I oh, mean, yeah, I yeah. This is the thing. Yeah, like for, for overseas people, we're talking about a corner store. <laughs> It's CBD a, of Melbourne, yeah. opposite our main train station in Flinders Street. Yeah, it is. Heap foot traffic galore, yeah. like backing back, waiting for the lights to change. Yeah. Like, good spot. Amazing but spot. And ex a, expensive? Very expensive. So that's such a – I'm, I'm really interested in brave Ooh. business decisions. So that's a brave one. Yeah. Uh, I think we might have got <laughs> in at a something slightly reasonable but high. Like yeah, yeah. Like over nearly 100 a year. Near, I mean, this is 2005 or something, right? So yep. it's still very high, but we could see there's thousands of people. So here's my brain. This is my brain at work because yeah. I've never owned a, yeah. you know, bricks and mortar business of any sort. Yeah. So I go, okay, you're selling chips. Yeah. You're selling potato, hot potato chips. Five bucks, yeah. F at five bucks. Yeah. I imagine there's pretty good margin in them because – Potatoes aren't expensive, but, you know, you're doing a lot to them and you've got staff and you've got 100 grand a year in rent. You've got yeah. utilities. You've, you've yeah. got so many expenses in starting a business. Yeah. And anyone who's listening and who hasn't started a business, I don't want to scare them off, but this is how – then I go, how, does it, how do you possibly make money doing that? Plus, you've got marketing, all staff, <laughs> so many costs. Yeah. Well, you don't know if you've never had a business before. <laughs> we didn't really know. So we just sort of uh, – we did. We talked to a few people. We, some people believed in us, but we mostly just just believed in it. What just made you go, yes? Yeah, we didn't sit around. I, I, I don't remember no, sitting around. No big spreadsheets or anything? Oh, maybe. maybe. If they did, I've blocked, deleted that part out of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was probably like, you guys do that and yeah. I'll go and start. Start cooking. Yeah, I'll start creating the <laughs> uniforms or something else. So, yeah, we just uh, just took the leap. Good on you. It's a good oh, idea. I find and that incredible. Other people, other businesses are doing things like fast food, French yeah. fries. Like, of course, it's, we can do it. Yeah. You know? And we knew it was good. And people were begging us open. And we loved it. And, and at this we, point, are you just selling? No, uh, no, no. We expanded the menu. Ah, yeah. so that's and, interesting. Uh, furthermore, the costs were the costs were also tempered by the fact that Sam was doing all the menu des designing, graphic designing. We were we we're not investing in marketing, so we were. You're just, working in the business we're too. You're behind, in the, the business. behind the counter. Yeah, so like a lot of those costs, we we didn't have. We didn't have a bookkeeper. <laughs> we yeah. didn't have an accountant. We didn't have like a lot of things that we would yep. we do now. Mm -hmm. So it's a very different scale. Uh, and like the the uh, festivals, Amanda did yeah. Lord of the Fries first store take off yeah. instantly. Did it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was awesome. It's the chip thing. I know, I'm, I'm sure the, they're good chips, but yeah, it's, it's... look, there is chip. People love chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they love chips. Plus, they liked the vibe. They liked uh, the colors. They liked the music. They mm -hmm. liked the service. They liked the, the fact that we were open late. They liked that we could do it quickly. We, you order mm -hmm. one side, pick up the other. It was just like perfect. It was a whole experience. Yeah. And the vegans and vegetarians, they just told each other. There's a network. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah, just yeah. tell everybody everything. I know that so network. They, they were all coming, you know. Yeah. So we had them and we had all the people that didn't know. They think they're just having fries. So so he, it is, it's totally vegan, yeah, Lord of the Fries. Yeah, Yet in any of your marketing, yeah. the only reason I know this is because of my daughter. Yeah. It's vegan. Yeah. In all of the well, marketing, it's there if you look. You don't want to see that. Just like you don't want to see... Why? The, why the do you gelatin. hide? I I think I know why you you hide it. Yeah, it's not hidden. It is. It's from, hidden from you. Well, you, I'm on your website now. I'm looking at your t-shirts. You've got a branded t-shirt on. Old, yeah, yeah. Um, so just a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, so no, no, on the website, there's nothing obvious at all. Well, if you look uh, through the menu, it would say like veg meat, veg sausage, right. veg chicken. But why don't you promote it as like no. primary Lord of the Fries right. tagline? You know. The worst steak restaurant in the world. Right. Hilarious. <laughs> Just being a bit lateral. <laughs> oh, the award-winning fast food, yeah, vegan yeah. fast food. So do, do you, okay, why let, we don't is because yeah. it's controversial. Yes, it, yeah, I thought so. It divides people. Yes. It makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they don't just get to have something delicious to eat, but then they have to defend their values and defend their choices. And yes. we, we, we're not into this missionary conversion movement. We're into... Standing up for what we believe in, aligning our lifestyle with our our values and our, and then what's come out of that is a business that reflects that. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. So, so okay. So yours was so with vegans. You don't me, promote both, it because Mark vegans Sam don't. Mark and I are all vegetarian. Vegan. They don't. You don't want to. Ju- vegans don't want to justify why they're buying something no, vegan no, a, no. as a carnivore. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those carnivores yeah. that the minute I see vegan on the yeah. menu, I go nope. Exactly. And I know that's very. Why though? Uh, because I think it'll be tasteless. Yeah, that's the thing. And yeah. that's and generally I'm right, would. and every now and then I am completely wrong, where I go, this is the best meal, like the best curry I've ever had, or yeah. this is the best salad I've ever had, and I walk away with my tail between my legs. But generally speaking, yeah. if I see something promoted as vegan, it's just equals tasteless. Yeah. Hello, hello to all you vegans yeah. out there who are going to now write me letters. No, I think that you, that's a not so strange that you think mm. that, because for a very long time... That's what was being created was sort of, well, it just tastes like vegetables or or even like less, maybe yeah. just a mush or a mash of, yeah. So yeah. That, that impression is, we also had that impression as well. And that's why we created this business because we can take this this food that's vegan, plant-based, whatever, mm. and make it taste amazing, mm-hmm. taste delicious, so good you wouldn't know. Wouldn't know. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It's not, it it's not important. It's not Just important. enjoy. Yeah, that's that's our full philosophy. It's like good, but it's important to us. That's why we created. It seems it. like you've had a dream run so far. You and Mark yeah. and Sam. You're yeah. just sitting back selling chips. Was there a moment? Because certainly, the twelve years I've been doing this podcast, I've certainly never wanted to be the guy that holds up the flag and says, "Small business is so easy." Oh no, come it's on, so in. easy. Yeah. You know, you'll make a gazillion. No. So well, so far the Lord of the Fries journey has yeah. been a dream run. Yeah, tell it's, tell it's me good. when you hit a roadblock, or you and Mark and Sam looked each other in the eyes and were in the fetal position, going, "Oh my God, what have we done?" Was there <laughs> well, a moment? Well, during lockdown was pretty yeah, okay. full on. No you know, doubt, we had to really start to think, okay, what are we going to do? You know, who's getting a job? Who's staying? Who's getting a job? Mm -hmm. You know, that was sort of Mm -hmm. the discussion we had. And that's not right. You know, you just have to be realistic. So we had that chat. Yeah, so that was tough. But then What about early days? uh, Early days. Or to just keep going. You just get the next door and the next door and the next door. Yeah. And like all, all along the way, there's trouble often. Big problems like someone stealing like thousands of dollars from you. Or you get a tax bill. One time we got this tax bill that was like, Oh, I think it was like seventy thousand dollars, like out of the blue. Yeah, right. You know, we, we don't just have this sitting in the bank. We don't like those. Two thousand eight no. or something. No. So uh, there's been lots of fetal position mm-hmm. moments, mm-hmm. and then we just work through it. Carry on. Carry on. We just. What do we need to do now? You know, mm-hmm. we have to shut this store, open another store. We're going to have to increase sales. We're going to have to cut this product. You know, we just get creative. Mm-hmm. But it's you know. Mark and I meditate, <laughs> so it helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps manage a lot of that. No doubt. Because we can sort of stay in the center. We're not getting swept around a lot by the ups and downs of business, yeah, yeah, which okay. there's heaps of them. Yeah. And lockdown, that was, you know, tough, but it was awesome also. Yeah. You know, for a lot of reasons. Have a break, huge break. I want to have the spiritual conversation with you because I know that's where you've gone with your own personal business. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that in a minute. However, you did mention you and Mark meditate. Yeah. Is that is that a daily thing at, yeah. the, at the start of the day? And Double, twice a day. Twice a day. Yeah, Are you, is, that, um, is that a particular style? What's yeah. V- v- Vipassana? Or? Uh, Vedic. Vedic. And transcendental. This you do those sort of, two. It was called the same, it's sort of the same thing. Transcendental comes from the Vedic tradition. Yeah. So it's, uh, we, Mark's, of course, you know, he brought it into our home. Beautiful. He studied it, and uh, we've both studied it now, and we've been practicing for years now. And what do you think that does to your mindset oh, at the so start of a business day? Oh, so good. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, your nervous system, so that's your whole body. Like, mm-hmm. you feel relaxed, you're rested, you're calm in your body, so that's a big deal. Big deal, yeah. And then your mind is not filled with, like, a bunch of junky racing thoughts, repetitive thinking. Yeah. You're sort of clear-minded. And you feel safe in the world because you're constantly plugging in to the space beyond your mm-hmm. personality and your identity to the bigger quantum field or what have you. It's a pretty good reward for 20 minutes-ish. <laughs> yeah. It's the most valuable uh, tool uh, any entrepreneur could have, uh, anyone. I had um, a fellow, better. Ray Good, <clears throat> on the podcast about three years ago. He has... Um, a website called The Good Place, and he yeah. is a mindfulness coach for businesses, mm. and um, it was a beautiful conversation. In fact, he, he took us through a couple of 
mindful meditations uh, during the, the interview. And um, yeah, us business owners are generally not very good at looking after our spiritual, physical, mental well-being. Yeah. But, so it's lovely to hear that you do. Yeah, and if we if we all did like everything is benef- everything benefits. So if you start with yourself and your relationship to yourself and the universe, mm-hmm. then everything from there benefits from that. So your business you feel more calm, more creative, connected, safer. You're not in reacting to things all mm-hmm. the time. You're not in doom, gloom, fight, flight, mm-hmm. everything. What do you say to business owners who are listening who are about to turn us off because we're getting a bit woo-woo yeah. and business is very serious. It's about <laughs> numbers and, yeah. and and foot traffic and, you know, conversions. Yeah. Um, how do they uh, – but they know there's a little bit of them that goes, about, I know. It's all Where about. do you start? Just go and sit, you know. Do you like yeah. some incense, cross your legs, put on some sandals and – yeah. No, you no, don't. Yeah, I do. Yeah. But you don't have to. I'll you just sit in to. my car. Got to make it simple. I sit in my car and just <clears> close <throat> my eyes and – well, I'm trained and I do train people, but also you can just put on Insight Timer, the app. Yeah, that's a great just app. pick anyone and just yep. sit, get in your car, just close your eyes and just calm the F down, <laughs> right? Just chill calm out. The, is that fry? Calm the yeah, fry yeah, down? Yeah, that's nice. Calm the fry <laughs> Calm down. the fry down. Yeah. That'd be a great T-shirt. I love it. I love it. So the vegans would love that. You're good at this. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Been go- I've been going for, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I'll get there. I love hey, it. Hey, let's talk about yeah. marketing. Okay. Let's go from meditation yeah. to marketing. Sure. Uh, what's your view on marketing as a business owner? Is it's, it important? It's essential. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's essential. It's your your way of communicating. Your, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's the best. It is. What has been the most effective marketing over the years? Good food. Yeah. Good locations. Yeah, right. Word of mouth. Yeah. Loyal fans. Because well, you, don't, you, you don't, I don't think I've ever seen a... I, mean, I don't watch TV anymore, but I don't mm-hmm. see any ads for Lord of the Fries on YouTube, TV. No, YouTube we have. Yeah. Radio. Oh, really? Well, we go through different I probably stages. will now that I've said but, that. Yeah, and yeah. You'll my phone's see, next to me. You'll see French fries everywhere, yeah, yeah. Lord of the Fries everywhere, and everything will seem vegan to you, and yeah. you will yeah, see Lord right. of the Fries on every yeah. social media channel. Uh, YouTube, so you got YouTube ads. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes we don't, so it just depends. Yeah, yeah. So before, before lockdown. Yeah. We had a lot of marketing, mm. and then we had none. Because, you know, in a franchise system, the, yeah. the franchisees can pay for the marketing fund. Yes. So when they're not trading, there's no marketing. No marketing fund. Yeah. You went down, I should ask about that. So you went down the franchise route. Yeah. You've now got how many stores? 20-ish? 20 20-ish. Mm, ish. Ish, ish. And then some in New Zealand. Nationally yeah. in Five the New Zealand. Zealand. 20 in Australia and growing. I think one of the things that fascinated me just about looking at Lord of the Fries is and you've gone to New Zealand. Like, it's not as if you've got Australia covered. And mm-hmm. there's not a Lord of the Fries on every corner where there sort of could be because hot chips are loved by everyone. It's mm. sort of like one of those – you could almost – I could see that working. Yeah. Uh, you've, it feels a bit restrained the way you have mm. grown Lord of the Fries. Am I right? Are you just you don't you're yeah. not trying to build a, a, no. an empire, an, you know, an empire. You we just, are, we are. You are, but it's a slow growth. It doesn't it? have to be. Yeah, we, there's three of us in head office plus Yusuf, our our head national operations manager, and our office. Right. So we have a small team. Four of you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Must small. have a franchise manager. N- well, operations manager. Like we're all sort of managing different yeah, areas right. of it. I'm head of operations. There you go. COO. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Mm, that's Sam, chief uh. operator. Says Sam, I'm H O O. Yeah. So we we're busy. Yeah, and we sure. all have families. Yeah. Okay. So it's a slow growth. You know, we're growing, perfecting. So that's a choice. That's, that's a choice. I, you know, that's yeah. that's we'll expand itself. more. Also, you need good operators. You yep. need good locations. It's a formula. Yep. So and uh, when the right opportunity comes, we take it. And also, we're working on our business, in our business, with our families. Yes. We also want to be. You know, have social lives and yeah, yeah, love yeah, going yeah. to movies and restaurants. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's you know, some business owners I speak to are like, oh, we're, going, we're driven, we're going, we're going, and get out of our way. We've yeah. got to, you know, we've got to be national, we've got to this and that. Whereas yeah, you're just it's doing a long it. Game. Slow food. Yeah, it's a slow fast, fast food. Slow a, fast, food. <laughs> a slow approach to fast food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're done. Oh, jeez, you're churning them out. So um, you, when the opportunities come along, you said you will grow. Is an opportunity like a, a an amazing piece of real estate comes up? Be, yeah. Or a potentially an amazing franchisee. Both. Both that look really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what I wanted to say before, which I forgot, is around COVID. What yeah. came out of that was we started a retail food line. 
Oh, yeah, I'm looking that. at that, the, the yeah. merch. Yeah. The mac and cheese. Yeah, so that's our first product. We have three take-home cook-home mac and cheese. Delicious. Had some last night. Why, why do they oh, look like? It's going to bring you some. I'll still get you some. Oh, I'm good. For your daughter. I love mac and, and cheese. But then it'll be, okay, no, don't yeah, say, Tim. Don't worry. The, the immediate was, they're going to be tasteless. How yeah. rude. Well, yours is not tasteless at all. How rude. Yeah. Um, why do they look like a cornflake packet? Because <laughs> that's how they look. I don't think they look like that, though. When I saw it on the website, I'm looking at it now. Yeah. It does, um, looks like a cereal. But packet. you know what? It's uh, it's I think a tribute to classic. Yeah, you things got it. that we yeah, grew yeah, up yeah. with. Same with our whole brand. So we're always kind of throwback to the '80s. This is where we grew up. Yeah. In the that love era. that. Yeah. So with the whole brand, we kind of loop through that aesthetic music '80s, um, urban, international. Very cool. So you got uh, this. Okay. So the range is mac and cheese. Yeah. What are the other two products? This is the range. Oh, at different yeah. sizes so and servings. And yeah, okay. Uh-huh. And classic cheddar. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All available online. Yeah, all available on in the stores too. Uh huh. Soon at your house. Nice. Yeah, and we we're, were growing this brand, so this will be going into retail stores with lots of products coming oh, out. That's really cool. beautiful packaging, delicious tasting. With the mac and cheese, we tried like every single plant based mac and cheese yep. we could get our hands on. Every it's better than all of them. Wow. It's delicious. Yeah. So we're I'll, happy about that. We're really growing that. Yeah, I look forward to trying it. Yeah. I look at these ideas sometimes and go, "Is are they worth it? Because I imagine the 80-20 rule applies and that 80% of your business is coming from, uh, hang on, get the get 20%, is it, yeah, 80% of your business is coming from 20% of your stores or something and this is just a, a nice to have. It's like Declan from Gelato Messina was saying, you know, like, yeah, they sell ice creams online, and ice cream cakes online, but it's, it's a very small portion of what they do and it's not, doesn't make a big difference, but it's nice to be able to offer that to your customers. And so this will be a big product because yeah. it'll go beyond our stores into awesome. other retail stores. So then we'll have like stores everywhere selling. Orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. So that's a new. That's something we've been wanting to do for years, but you know, time. Mm-hmm. But COVID, I don't know, the COVID lockdown, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Gave us that time. Social media would appear to be, on the surface, given your typical customers, imagine it's quite young. Yeah. But your social media is not that active. Yeah. Is that a, you've made a decision because, you know, personally it's, it's as, as a parent. pretty active. Yeah, uh, actually. Yeah, well, bit, like, what, how do you okay, measure okay. it? We've yeah, that's huge, rude, isn't it? No, yeah. it's not rude. Not rude. Just, I'm saying, well, I looked at a couple of posts. You had eight posts. For Instagram, for example, you had eight yeah, posts and 106 yeah. followers. So that's not like very active. But it's um, obviously not your... Well, if you look at the videos... It's, it's, yes. Yeah, that got it lot. So some yes. of the posts are, it's hit or miss. Some are like, oh, that's really interesting. If they ask a question, there's a lot more yes. responses. If I ask questions in stories, they get a lot of interest. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but we have a huge... Uh, it Base. wasn't an accusation. I'm I'm happy to see a business not, you know, getting yeah. distracted by social media. But, but um, what, uh, yeah, no, it's good. They're okay. It's good. You were yeah. doing weekly updates on YouTube. I noticed you did about 12 weeks of those. Yeah. Didn't kind of found that too much hard work and uh, not enough What happened is I got COVID. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so then I was in lockdown in my house and I was like, I'm not, it's my curly hair sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my hair is, I have to get it curly before I can go on camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming back to that. We're going to do... Friday. Um, Surely you make something out of thank, Friday. Thank God it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like, I can't remember what we're calling it. Thank, something around, thank God it's Friday. We're going to give giveaway and some information as well. Right. So I'm doing those videos. Those will go on our YouTube channel. So not all, maybe. Please I tell me you spell what? Friday with a Y. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Good. But what do you think is, you know, if say say an Instagram post only gets 108 likes, say. Mm-hmm. Like, does, does that mean cut it or you know, uh, you're you asking still, me yeah yeah look I, you still I, show no. up anyways yeah, yeah well look I'm not really the person to ask about social media because I don't really like it but yeah I mean is 108 a big a good number I don't know mm, yeah, I mean it would be right. like I guess yeah it depends on what you're it means there's 108 people who have interacted with your brand so that's got to be mm. a good thing mm. but some people might see it and not say anything uh, most will or flick it into stories yep. the videos get more brand awareness yeah. it's all about that yeah and the videos, uh, they're fun, but yeah, you got to be in, uh, I struggle to be in the mood always. To do yeah, that. yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know. Like so many business owners think it's the silver bullet. Like I'll get on Facebook and everything will be okay. It's yeah. not like that. 
No, you got to keep work going, it. keep going. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're, it, we show we've got a consistent presence there. And when we need to agitate or amplify, we do. Otherwise, we're just like consistently there. Like we're yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a burger. Here's a fries. <laughs> here's a burger. Here's a money ring. Here's a milkshake. And then when but we need to. But it is hard. To, even, even that. What am I going to say today on my socials? I had, in, in order to answer that question, I did an episode recently with Philip Cooch, who owns three bakeries out in the boondocks of Melbourne, yeah. Croydon, Ringwood Way. Mm. And, um. He is in the top three Australian businesses on TikTok with 800 or 645,000, might be 845,000 followers. Oh, that's so big. And his videos are getting like 20, 30, 40,000 likes. Yeah. And they're just like behind the scenes. Here's a donut being made. Here's yeah, a donut being put it. in a package to be yeah. sent to someone for their birthday. And quite incredible. And he was actually off. Now, TikTok Australia had tapped him on the shoulder and said, would you now, would you go to McDonald's and Toyota on our behalf and show them how to use TikTok? Um, I'm, that... He's my new mentor. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome funny. guy. But I think my yeah. point there is, you know, the content that works okay. on social, sometimes just, yeah. I'm left, as a 55-year-old bloke, I'm left just going, really? Yeah. 20,000 really? people. Have you ever seen some people playing with slime? Yeah. Squishing stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, con- there's yeah, yeah. whole videos of people just sticking their fingers yeah. in slime. Yeah, I know. Yeah. People the just will sort of watch anything. Yeah. It, it, it could because what's going on is not just going on in front of you, but it's going on inside your head. True. So you're like not, you, you might just see a donut out there, but inside your mind you have eaten that donut. You've packed it up. You might have like made donuts at home. Yes. You, you know, like a lot of stuff is going on more than just... In the front. Yeah. Well, people love donuts and people love hot fries. So you got to walk up, start. Yeah. I got is some there, work to do. Is there something, Amanda, that you you would love to try with the Lord of the Fries business, but it just scares the pants off you because it's a, either a big idea, an expensive idea, or a brave idea? That's a great question. Well, there's a lot of things we'll still try. Like the, we've got a lot of space in front of us. I'd love to get more vans. I'd love to get oh, a, yeah. have like mini shops that are just express. Great idea. Like holes in the wall. Yeah. I just, love holes in the wall. I have this, I have this, as soon as I see a hole in the wall, my immediate thing is that is, un, that'll be unreal yeah. because they can't do many things. Yeah. So whatever they do, they must do very well. Yeah, yeah. I just it's like a food truck philosophy. Yeah. Something like, I think that would be really cool. The the rent would be like, could, <laughs> could be less. Like, yeah, yeah. It could also still be very high if it's in the right place. Where it is. Yeah. You know, you fact all. What else? Great ideas. Um, now there's, we've got so many uh, beautiful ideas but it's just time place mm-hmm. you know i think right now our energy is going to be on creating more products we're starting a new menu soon yeah, so yeah. releasing more loaded fries yes some other items i like, probably some meat dim sims meat based uh. Dim, yeah. No. yeah we're introducing meat <laughs> for you so just, just tell me about that coming. i'm always interested in brand expansion yeah the business is called lord of the fries yeah. You now oh, do yeah. burgers, onion rings, nuggets, hot dogs, mac and cheese. Uh-huh. You're moving into all these other things. Yeah. So that secondary business called Lord of the. Yes. Lord but of you, haven't, the... you haven't done that yet. No, that's the mac and cheese. That's, oh, it, it, yeah. Oh, Lord. I can now, right? I didn't see that. So it's the, all right of in my the face. other things will be Lord of the. Ah. Dim Sim. Lord, really? Yeah. A separate business? Lord of the pizza. It's called Lord of the. Hang on, I don't and then understand. We can, yeah, I get that. But we like, can add whatever name onto it we want. And as a separate business? No, just as a separate product. Okay. But you're not it's not called Lord of the Burger or Lord of the Onion Ring. But it will be. The product will be. Uh-huh. But the brand is called Lord of the So if I'm in the future standing at one of your stores, do I order could I please have a Lord of the Onion Ring? No. Nah. No? No, this is a retail yep. I'm talking about. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. As in in uh, third part in Coles yeah. or in delis yeah. or whatever, you'll see okay. onion rings example Got frozen it. onion rings. We say Lord of that have a picture of onion rings. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. The expansion into those other products at a store level, though. Yeah. Was that a decision because you just uh, to me it potentially muddies the water. Yeah. And not confuses it just muddies the water. Yeah. Um, because you're you're a chip business and you do them really well. Yeah. Was it a decision that, well, we're not making enough money out of chips, we need to add to the menu? What, 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 why did you need to feel like you had, needed to offer more than chips? You mean burgers? And, yeah, onion well, rings, people, nuggets, hot dogs. People like different snacks. But and, but and, do you have to be the business that, because I can get different snacks from elsewhere. Of course, you want the greatest share of wallet. I get yeah. that. But it just from a branding point of view, there is 
real courage yeah. in sticking to your knitting. Well, we are the chip guys. True. That's it. Yeah, this is true. Stick into your knitting. So we do have four kinds of fries. So I think that's the knitting. And But people don't, they often want other things with their fries. So that's where those other things come from. Mm-hmm. But most people are always getting fries plus a burger because they want a complete meal. Flies, flies. No. <laughs> I had to say, I had to say, <laughs> once I had to say it, fries will always be... Yeah, they're the, the showcase. Hero. Yeah, the always hero. be the hero. They're the hero. Yeah. yeah, okay. But also, the thing about it, we're a, a vegan fast food business, 100% vegan. So mm. that this is rare. Mm-hmm. And yes. all of the, it's also not just cheap stuff. Like all of the stuff we taste a thousand times, it's with the best ingredients that work out in the, with the correct profit mm-hmm. margin, right? Mm-hmm. So, like as locally sourced as possible, looking at who's supplying it, what are their what are their ethics and environment. So it's not just fries. Okay, mm-hmm. for 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 some of the population, it's just fries. But for a lot of other people, it's being able to get the best plant based comfort food they can find in in plant based comfort different, food. Nice, yeah, isn't that nice? I like that. Yeah, that looks like that feels safe. Yeah, for yeah, you. it's a bit more of a smile appeal. Yeah. As soon as I heard comfort food, I'm like, where's that? Give yeah, me, give me some yeah, of that. That's right. <laughs> Do you have children? Yeah, I have two. Are they chips oh. off the old block? Oh, yeah. I had to get that out. Yes, they are. Oh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> I think I feel like you're co- collecting a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My mind's just slowly waking up. I should have meditated this morning. <laughs> hey, Amanda, tell me, just before we finish out, I have yeah. thoroughly love this discussion. I oh, know a lot more about a brand that yeah. I saw often and never did anything about. So I'm, it's nice to have a little bit of a background story. You have moved into being a meditation teacher life business coach and a mentor yeah. for women wanting to start their business. Yeah. Um, do you not have enough on? You, you, uh, you're a mother. Yeah. Look, you are a, a business owner. It is a lot. It is wh- a lot, but it's... Wh- uh, why did you decide that? Is it, is, it a, is it a, I don't know, is it an hour a week? Is it 20 hours yeah. a week? Is it where you're headed? Are you leaving? It's, you know, it's, too, it's, too, it's a future, that's also a long game for me. Long so game. as I age, you know, that's where I want to be going. Mm-hmm. We, uh, before I started Lord of the Fries with Mark, I wanted to be a... Therapist. I was thinking I'll go go back to Toronto. Counselor. Study. Yeah, psychotherapist. Psychotherapist. This yeah. type of thing. I'm yeah. interested in humans. I love. Did heaps of volunteer work as a university student. Did women's studies. It's so. I love humans. I love the human mm-hmm. condition. I have a very strong backstory. You can listen to my TEDx talk. Oh yeah. You want to know about it. What's the title of it? Uh, something like. Oh my god. About right. your beliefs. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> the power of your Seniors beliefs moment. or something like this. No, it's, just, it's, a, it's a cold moment. Get, my head's are full of clouds. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so anyways, um, I love humans. I, that's, I always wanted to be right. connected in that way. Okay. So Lord of the Fries, growing, doing all this. There's, sure, there's humans. I, I do the training, deal with franchisees, customers, customer complaints. Oh, you'd be all. great at that. Oh, thank you so much. But there's another level. That's deep calling, deep craving. And, and you I can't start, ignore it. No, I can't ignore it. No, definitely not. And I've been asked to do some... Public speaking, some uh, lead some entrepreneurs or women in this direction, and so that's sort of I started getting asked, invited to do those things. Yep. And then I started to just sort of own it. Okay, well, since you're asking that, why don't I offer this? And I did some professional training, quite a lot, which I don't know if anyone you know it's very addictive. <laughs> very what? Addictive. Once you start training, training what learning, was the training you did? Uh, coaching, life coaching at the coaching uh, institute yeah, down in Albert Park. Yeah, I did some. That's full on healing training. Reiki training with nourished energy, self-directed healing, with inspirited, yeah, full on. It's all yeah, full yeah. on, but it's it's actually this stuff like a, if, if it's my super passion. It's I love ah. the uh, belief systems and pain. is Lord of the Fries in the way? <laughs> Not pain. No, 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 no. It's all part of the whole thing. Was it Mark knew this from the start, or did you yeah, have to Mark's, tap him on the shoulder no, at some no, point? He's ago? always no. He's cool. It's beautiful. Mark's really cool, yeah. and he allows me to flow, and I take care of my responsibilities and my role at Lord of the Fries. And I also do this. Yeah. And I'm cultivating this p- part of my identity for down the track. What's five years down the track? What's the mix look like? The balance between Lord of the Fries and right. Amanda, the oh, coach yeah, and Inspirer. Oh, thanks. I love this. So um, I'm like speaking internationally about Lord of the Fries and yes. about becoming someone who can create an amazing, thriving, values aligned business, which is helping other entrepreneurs mm-hmm. have the courage and to tune into their vision and 
maybe go deeper inside themselves to get rid of all of the stuff that blocks them from following their heart. Mm -hmm. So I'm speaking around the world. We've got some books out for the business. There's Lord of the Fries all around the world with heaps it. of products. <laughs> and I've got a book or two myself, like, you know, Janina. Yes. Heard of her. Yes. So, you know. Stuff like cool stuff. So you, you hit it. That's, it's the. It's actually the Daniel Flynn model. I call yeah. it the Daniel Flynn I'm, model. I want to be. From, yeah, from, from I love thank you. that model. Yeah. Daniel's a, a good friend of mine, and I've done a lot of speaking with him as well. He's, and I watch exactly what he does, and had a long chat with him about how he goes about it. So for those yeah. who don't know, again, it's a, it's an FMC brand, FMCG brand. Thank you. It was water and and baby Tissues. products and toiletries and all and that kind of wash. stuff. Yeah. Daniel uh, is a social entrepreneur and, um, yeah, he has built that business to the point where it, everyone wants to know about it. So he, he makes a fair bit of dough from speaking uh, and, and, and writes travels. books and travels. And parents. And parents. Yeah. In fact, just moved up about five kilometres from where I live up in Noosa. So, oh, you uh, see how sweet. He's, he's it's done a the, sweet yeah, life yeah. following your heart, yeah, That's right. right. So that's okay. That's where you want to head. That's really interesting. Yeah, and, and it's, it's that's fun. I'm following my calling, and I'm follow, so following opportunities. Yeah, well, it also it. actually contributes. It, it'll build the brand. It's just it's actually yeah. it's actually marketing. So they go build hand your personal in hand. brand and that's your business right. brand. And, and I think that's why Mark and Sam are also so cool with it. Yeah, yeah. They know that it's all tied together. Yep. Yeah. How fantastic. Oh, Good you, on you. Thank you. You asked me before about difficult conversations. Yes. I don't want to leave that one hanging. I don't so, think you did. I thought you <laughs> sort of looked. It sounded like you. They come easy. Yeah, well, they, they, they're, they're, handled, they're handled well. They don't come easy. They're they really well. cool. Yeah, I think largely because we meditate. So that helps us like we're calm. And also, I want to say, I think it's important to know, people ask a lot about working with family and they're like, how could you do that? Or what do you... So Mark and Sam are really amazing brothers. They're very, very fair. Mm -hmm. So that Mark doesn't give Sam more attention or give his va feedback more valuable than my everyone's val very valuable, uh, values valued. each other. Yeah. And fairly, right? Mm. And we also, so we have our relationship is really important, all of us, but our business is really important too. So it's just like w w being respectful for each other, but then also like, is this good for the business? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we all stay in our lane, trust each other. It's mm -hmm. a really, I feel so grateful um, and happy about it. I love it. Mm. I love Sam, love Mark. I, we all bring different things. Mark's like the visionary Menu development. He does majority of the marketing. Mm -hmm. Yet I am here with you, which <laughs> I am the people person. You are so the people I person, the storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. And Sam, he takes care of our like logistics and legal stuff, Perfect. all of the rent and all well, of the Well, it's a great financials. story. Yeah, it's really It's a really great. good story in the making, slowly but surely in the making. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think the book you're going to write is called Slow Business. Mm -hmm. uh, Slow Business fast, fast. Fast food, slow business. Mm. There we go. That's so good. There we go. Ah, love Better it. go and register that. Yeah, we'll have to write all this down. I know. Amazing. I'll send you the raw file so you can transcribe it and act on anything oh. you've said before we go live. I remember my <laughs> TED Talk name, The Limits of Your Beliefs. Have you remembered oh. the spud that you use? Yeah, but it starts with an R. <laughs> it's, um... Doesn't matter. Royale? It's a Royale. Mm, I think it's something like that. There you go. Hey, Amanda, great stuff. Thank you so much for sharing and taking us inside Lord of the Fries. Mm. For everyone who wants to check it out who's not near one, it's lotf.com.au mm. or you can go to lordofthefries.com.au and it'll redirect. But Both. love a good acronym. Mm. Go to lotof.com.au and I'm going to go and have some, maybe not today, but while I'm down in Melbourne because there's none near me up north. Mm -hmm. Well, probably in Brisbane. But that's Brisbane, okay. yep, there's one, Fortune yeah. Valley, and Surfers Paradise. Hey, hello. Get on there today. Amanda Walker, Lord of the Fries. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go, team. Lord of the Fries co-founder, Amanda Walker. I was so excited to bring that to you, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. She's so easy to chat with, happy to be there, generous with her time, super generous with her responses. And you know what? My big takeaway from that interview... Slow down. Remember, take your foot off the pedal every now and then. Catch yourself if you're racing everywhere. If you find yourself being short with others, slow down. Just slow it all down and smell them roses. Building a business is not dissimilar to raising a child, so enjoy the ride instead of racing through it. You with me? I hope so. Hey, let me know what grabbed your attention. Or maybe you want to tell me what's on your marketing mind by calling the Small Business Big Marketing Hotline on 0480 015 
1510. Just like longtime listener and founder of All About Grout in Western Australia, Lee did. It's your host, Mr. Timbo Reed. Timbo, Lee here from We're All About Grout in Western Australia. Just ringing to say hello again. I uh, I reached out to you about six months ago to let you know that um, bit of paralysis analysis. Well, that's all finished. The business has started. I've got people working on the books. It's all going in a fantastic direction. Exactly crack on plan. The, the amazing thing is, is, is my website was up for renewal. Rev 2 was needed pretty badly. And I've just listened to Studio One Design. And the reason it got hold of my attention is because basically uh, uh, you've been banging on about videos and handing out your knowledge and, and giving it for free and, and just, just, just sharing your knowledge. And I just really couldn't get my head around how to actually share it uh, outside of Facebook. So um, I'm, I've got a meeting with Greg next week, actually. So with fingers crossed, things go well. But I've got to tell you, I am actually addicted to your podcast because over the Christmas break, I think I must have checked my phone 50 times. Go, When's this next one going to drop? When's the next one going to drop? And, well, it dropped. There's a gentleman from Coastal Asbestos. Great story, great podcast. And I'm glad to see that you're still going strong, mate. I might reach out to you again in another six months. Let's see how things go. Thanks a lot, Timbo. See you later. Bye. Hey, thank you so much, Lee, for making the time to call the Small Business Big Marketing Hotline. I do love an addicted listener. I love it when I hear a listener use that word because it means they're invested in my podcast and I love that. That's one of my goals. And Lee, please do reach out in six months' time. I'd love to hear how your marketing efforts are going and if they're getting traction. You know, I have a theory that the listener who reaches out may be a tad more motivated to produce great marketing than those that don't. It's just a theory, but I don't know. It just says to me they're committed to their marketing and they're wanting to be better and personal development, all that kind of stuff. And Lee, good on you for listening and then contacting Studio One's Greg Merrilies for a new website. He just did mine and I could not be happier. If you haven't, everyone else, take a listen to episode 581 where Greg shares his five secrets to a high-performing website. And you can actually take a free quiz. It takes about 10 minutes to do. And at the end, it gives you a report, a free report that identifies where your website is holding your business back. You can take that quiz over at studio1design.com forward slash Timbo. And that's the number one, studio1design.com forward slash Timbo. Hey, thanks again, Lee. Everyone else, be like Lee and call me on 0480 015 150. Got some great guests coming up along with some exciting sponsor news and an update on my partnership with the Listener Podcast Network. All that news coming up in the coming weeks. If you enjoyed today's ep, be sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a review on your favourite podcast app. I would love that. I'm so demanding, I know, soz, but you know, it does help me. Where you'll also find 593 more episodes with successful business founders on your favourite podcast app. If you are ready to create some helpful marketing, grab a copy of my book, The Boomerang Effect, over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. But most importantly, thank you. A big, big thank you for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.